winter 2023. But it's almost spring, so I had to change my rating system to reflect my first impressions, and how much longer I'll stick around, if at all. More info down in the description. If I miss on anything, let me know below. Oh, and only minus 2% of people are subscribed, yada yada, you know the works. Lots of new stuff came out, so let's not waste more time. Let's get started. If you were a fan of Spy Family last year, but you thought it could have used more of your being an assassin, buddy daddies might do the trick. Two pro killers try to take care of Mary, the unpredictable and adorably oblivious four year old, who was in search of her long lost dad. The duo has this shut in slash overbearing dynamic going on, and it works well on the first episode. And Mary is this very accurate portrayal of a little kid, maybe even too good, down to the slightly annoying side. But she works well as the trigger to the chaos. And her innocence is cute and hilarious, as well as the visuals being really good. If the next episodes keep this energy going, I'd consider this one a must watch. Now, if you wanted more spy stuff, Spy Classroom is a thing that exists. A bunch of waifu spy students are gathered at a school, so they can prepare for a potential world war. But their teacher is terrible at explaining things, so they'll have to feel things out. Do it! An interesting concept, but not much there. The girls are pretty one dimensional, and they just feel like eye candy. The show does throw a lot of twists, but nothing special. It's missing something to rope me in. If you want the fan service, but also some substance, I'd check out The Eminence in Shadow instead. I'm gonna skip the sequels, because there are a lot, but they might be the highlight this season. From Binland Saga coming back through Mappa, Mungo Stray Dogs, to the Attack on Titan special, and Fruit of Evolution, for some reason, and all the others. We also got an interesting reimagining of Trigon. Full disclosure, I have no connection to the original, so as a newcomer to the series and without wanting to step on any toes, I think it's pretty good. I've never been big on CGI, but put Orange, the studio known for Beastars, and Land of the Lustrous, and I'll definitely give it a shot. Animation is great, characters have quirky designs, and their expressions are amazing. A lot of 2D shows wish they had these faces. Reminds me a lot of Dragon Ball Super Hero. And while Vash is different, I really like him. He's goofy, fun, and badass. I'm interested to see how the story plays out, since I've heard there are changes. Can't speak for fans of the show, and you can confirm in the comments. But again, as someone new, I'm into it. Now let's check out the isekai, and there's a bunch. We've got a farming isekai that actually looks promising, and with less projectile carrots. It shows the protagonist's progress in a cool way, and the use of different styles draws me in. It does seem like it's gonna end up being harem heavy, but here's hoping it doesn't lose its way too much. Probably the biggest surprise for me, Campfire Cooking in Another World by MAPPA is what it sounds, but they give our main guy the power to order food and tools from the real world through his own personal Amazon. Such a simple twist, but it works really well. Characters are fun, the isekai atmosphere is there, it's funny, and I might have been hungry, but the food looked delicious. The wolf angle has me a bit worried it'll ruin what they have going on, but I'll stick around to find out. The other normal guy in another world show is the handyman isekai, where the guy is good at picking locks, fixing stuff, and so on, and he's a part of a quirky party of adventurers. This one works more like separate segments or skits. It isn't the funniest thing ever, but it has its moments. It does show the group's bond rather nicely, making the protact feel wanted, so that's nice. A couple more episodes should be good to see what's going on. The Exorcist one has me torn though. The strongest exorcist in the world conjures up a spell to get isekai but is born with no magic, but is good with spiritual power, which still seems like magic. He's looked down upon, but he trains in secret, summons spirits, who are cute girls because of course, and then he proves his worth against a giant red newt. Ignoring the generic start, the magic concepts are interesting. If I have the time, I'll maybe give it one more shot to see if it has something. Saving 80k to retire in another world is sure to be a divisive one. Girl can travel between worlds after dying. That alone is such an interesting take on the isekai genre. I was ready to see what she'd do with it, and she decides to use it to make money. Huh. Don't get me wrong, this is a genius idea, but the animation and vibe of the show doesn't really help it nail the concept, or the comedy. And you're either gonna love or hate the protag, since she really is taking advantage of the locals. I dropped it, but if there's a hint of it getting better, let me know. The most talked about one is the reincarnated princess. We have the spunky dreamer Anis, that uses her past life's knowledge to make magical creations so she can fly and do other crazy stuff, since she has no powers. And yeah, her charm, her badass moments, and her vibe reminds me a ton of Chisato. Although I do think she comes out being a bit too hyper at times. And unlike Likoreko, this show is definitely Yuri. I'm not gonna say this is already a must watch, but the fun energy, the wild protag, and the decent visuals definitely has me checking it out. 
And the last sort of isekai involves a pair of students from the broadcasting club doing commentary in an otome game, when all of a sudden they're able to communicate with the in-game characters, who think these kids are gods. So they'll use their power to save the villainous princess, who also happens to be a tsundere. Oh, and the student duo are also sort of an item, so there's a double romance thing going on. A really interesting concept. The whole let's play anime idea is pretty cool, just gotta be careful with what they say. Maybe a bit too heavy on the color commentary, but if it balances out, this has potential. Lots of fantasy shows too. Chilling in My 30s is another one of those stories where the main guy is let go from a group because he's too weak, but then discovers his hidden potential, finds his perfect place in the world, and thrives. Our guy, who thinks he's a demon, tries to live among humans, saves a girl, is OP, boob jokes, the usual. It is a bit funny, and shows some heart, unlike other generic shows like this. A pair of episodes should be good to see if it has something more or not. Ningen Fushin didn't do it for me. Four adventurers team up after being screwed over. We got a former priest, a dragon girl, a mage, and the worst of all, an idol groupie. First episode felt all over the place, and the crazy pacing didn't help in giving me a reason to want to see these guys succeed. Plus, the world is way too mean-spirited for me. Not too stoked on this one. Giant Beast of Ours might have some potential. Imagine a world where villages are forced to live inside huge walls to avoid random attacks from giant monsters. Now stop thinking of Attack on Titan and go way more fantasy. Paladins, mages, powers, cat people. I am seeing a lot of negative reviews on this one, but I kinda like the first episode. It feels very mysterious and I'm liking the setup. Maybe it's worth a shot. We got a story where an isolated group live above the frozen atmosphere of the world. Suddenly, the youngest guy who's literally fly fishing saves a girl floating on a giant balloon. As a guy who isn't big on CGI, this one looks… fine. Characters are able to emote well, and the scale and ideas are interesting. Action is a bit stiff though. A few episodes should say what's up. Orphan girl is taken advantage of by the church. So a furry bait demon comes in and takes pity on her. She ends up sacrificing her eyes to form a pact with him. And now they'll travel the world together, okay? I've heard it has an ancient Magus Bride vibe, but it's super campy and unintentionally funny. Not a total drop, but probably not watching it. Giving fantasy a rest, we've got some not-so-cute girls doing some judo in this light-hearted school sports anime. A little slow, but it has some charm. Guessing it isn't super popular because of the designs, but I'd give it an episode to see what it's got. Another generic show based on a fantasy game in Japan with some mediocre animation. OP Protag goes into a school as a commoner to live in peace. But of course, stuff happens. Feels very generic, lots of exposition, and it tries to be low let's the random out of nowhere in the second half of the episode. But it just feels forced and uneven. Drop since there's better stuff out there. Fire Hunter is interesting. It involves a world where everyone is afraid of fire, since the wars have made it so people can spontaneously combust. Imagine Fire Force, but way less shonen. One of the hunters sacrifices himself to save the protag, so she has to journey to the capital to return the hero's dog. The animation itself is beautifully fluid and different, but I am seeing a lot of complaints about the pacing. The historical fantasy genre is a bit muddy for me, and maybe the story won't get better, but I'll give it a couple more episodes to see. We got a generic looking guy trying to get revenge on inanimate objects turned demons because of what they did to his family. But now we'll live with a group of these demons that are disguised as humans so he can chill out and stop hating. It's fine, I guess. But it gives off Shinobi no Itoki and Buchikire energy. Okay, but it might lose me quick. If you want a more edgy revenge story, Revenger is that. A samurai gets tricked into killing his future dad-in-law, then gets betrayed and almost killed, but is saved by a group of warriors for hire who want justice. And yeah, it gets gory quick. Very edgy deaths, tons of blood, and a lot of creatively dumb death scenes. But it's kind of entertaining, and it's visually decent. Might get stale, but I'll carry on a bit. We got three shows about dudes turning into girls. Reborn to Master the Blade is about an old adventurer on his deathbed. After growing his kingdom, he wishes to reincarnate so he's able to fight and master the sword. And of course, he comes out as a girl. But it's not creepy, I swear. She's pretty much a shonen protagonist who wants to battle for fun. A bit goofy, but it has some great animation and I'm curious to see if it can stand out more. Onimai is a tough one. You've got Studio Bind, the one created to make Mushoku Tensei, animating the story of a teen shut-in getting turned into a younger girl by his sister through science and spiked drinks. Seriously, the sister is way too sus and carefree about this. It is revealed that she did this to help his bro be better as a person, and I know it's supposed to be goofy and charming, but no. 
she's not even sure how long the drug will last, or if it even expires, and she really messes with him. The protag does take it like a champ though, but the bigger issue is that it has too much fan service. The heartwarming intention of the show kinda clashes with the etchiness, but the animation, colors, and designs are beautifully made. No joke, visually this is my favorite anime this season. Fluid emotions, hilarious gags and faces, one of the best animated endings ever. It's great. So I'm a bit torn on this one, but because of the visuals, I'll give it at least 3 more episodes to see if it can be less awkward and still deliver on that gorgeous animation. Ayakashi Triangle, on the other hand, floors it. It's a rom-com about an exorcist ninja and his relationship with his childhood friend that attracts ghosts and demons. Hijinks ensue with a demon disguised as a cat and the main guy gets turned into a girl. So it's super obvious we'll have some weird Yuri moments between the protags. And a love triangle, don't quote me on that. Plus the show is super etchy and suggestive, although it's kind of funny how they play it out. But I think a few more episodes would tell if all this gets stale or not. But all this isn't even on the same spectrum as the trashiest show this season. A guy wakes up cold and wet and is picked up by a girl from his class. He then discovers he's been turned into a dog somehow and he can't talk. So now he's her pet, there's a shower scene and she's a bit too comfortable with him. But you know what to expect. I can't believe it's not hentai with a wacky premise, whatever. All of a sudden, she starts barking and then... I don't know if I can show or even say this, but she goes to town on the dog's nose. Like, what? Why? I got freaking whiplash from seeing this. I came in thinking that I was gonna hate the guy for being a simp, but I now despise the girl for being a freak, and I've heard it gets worse. Oh, and by the way, her name's Karen. Karen. I don't know why I found that so funny, but yeah. Probably the worst thing I've seen since starting the channel, like, just, just no. Let's just go ahead and check out the good romance shows. Sugar Apple Fairy Tale is a perfectly named shoujo anime about a girl in a fantasy world whose dream is to be a master confectioner. Oh, and end the slavery of fairies. So she gets herself a slave. She does this because she needs a bodyguard and promises to free him afterward. Some things lead to another, the angsty fairy does the dark and brooding tsundere thing, but you know deep down he likes the girl. And you've got the shoujo formula down. But beyond that, I'm really liking the quaint color scheme and the designs. This might be a sleeper, if it can avoid making the dynamic stale. Ice Guy and the Cool Girl has the office setting, but is in a world where magic ancestors exist. So you can have normal humans working with a fox girl, Buddha, or the main guy, whose emotions are connected to his ice powers. And he happens to fall for the cool-headed new girl. It's super laid back, and the many ways they use the powers to represent his feelings are kind of funny. And the chill soundtrack reminds me of Late Night Animal Crossing. I do think this might be too innocent and mushy though. Maybe it's gonna be one of those shows that takes a long time to have the couples advance, and it's gonna get a little tired. But maybe the fantasy part will add something more to this. We'll have to see. Speaking of which, Angel Next Door. The beautiful my hero is called an angel at school, because of how she acts and looks. But one day, she's crying in the rain, and the generic main guy, her neighbor, swoops in with an umbrella. He gets sick after, and she helps him to repay the favor. But now, after pretty much never talking, she offers to cook for him, helps clean his house, and starts to open up to him. You know, it's a typical anime scenario. Perfect girl falls for the loser guy. And I dig the visuals, and it feels like a wholesome time, but it feels too... perfect. Like, it's missing some characters, some oomph, some spice. The guy just feels replaceable, per se. I'll watch some more, but I hope it doesn't stick in the generic from compile. I feel like Kubo-san has a similar premise, but the main duo is way more interesting. Junta is effectively invisible at school. He goes to class as normal, but the students and teachers don't notice him. Although he seems okay with it. But in comes Kubo-san, who always notices him, and is eager to tease and make him stand out. And man, she is cute. She has a great voice and some adorable reactions. I immediately like their dynamic. Think of Takagi-san, but Junta is way less frantic and overreactive than Michikata. Visuals are cute and it feels charming to me. Maybe I'm just a sucker for these kinds of shows, but I'm sure I'll be watching. The one I've seen the most, because of the memes, is Tomo-chan. Basically, we've got the tomboy wanted to be noticed by her childhood friend, but he always treats her like just one of the guys. Heck, she got bro-zoned in the first minutes. 
But her mannerisms and her practicing karate with the men's team don't really help her, but she's still determined. I think what pushes this show further is the side cast, especially Mizuzu. She puts everything into action. She advises Tomo, she teases June and eggs him on, and she's just really fun to watch. And from what I've heard, there's even more to come. If the show can advance the characters and relationships while still being fun and goofy, it's got it made. Now we go to probably the most hyped up new show, the adaptation of Nier Automata. I haven't gotten the chance to play the game, but we all know who 2B is, so this was interesting to see, and being honest, I wasn't blown away with the first episode. I know it's hard to adapt to different gameplay styles, but the robots and especially the flying jets just had really poor CGI. They seem like PS2 graphics. Still, the fights were good, and it is pretty fateful. And I want to see these characters, but maybe I'd get more hyped if I had played the game. Regardless, I'll give it a couple more shots, but I really expected more. Last one, and the first episode I liked the most, is High Card. Magic playing cards are scattered after a heist, and they have the ability to give the user magical powers, like appearing stuff out of nowhere, magic guns, turning stuff into candy marbles, luck, etc. Think of like the Infinity Stones. The main guy, Finn, a fun, smooth-talking swindler with a good heart, goes to Vegas to win money for an orphanage. After a lot of crazy action, he ends up stealing the luck card, and ends up face-to-face -face with another card user. It's a good time, the animation is great as well as the colors and the signs. I'm assuming he'll end up trying to get the other cards, or help the good guys. But if they keep up the action and exploit these wacky powers that are really creative, I'm going all in on this one. Let's hope it delivers. And those are the new anime of winter 2023. By the way, these are the shows I skipped. Pretty much boiled down to the idol shows and random stuff I didn't want to waste time on, if I'm being brutally honest. I appreciate all the content, but it's a lot of stuff to go through. I think the season is good, but 2022 just left the bar as high as possible. I did have to change my approach to just watching the first episode or two, because apart from the excessive number of shows, I took too much time making the 2022 vid, and winter started slow for me. Hopefully spring is better, and less full. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite show, and if you like my new rating system or not. I'll do my best to watch as much as I can, and get ready for the tier list. By the way, we passed 100 subscribers recently, thank you so much. This has been a tough ride with all the time editing and scripting takes, but I've had a lot of fun, and I hope this goes even more. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. It's been Jules, I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you all for the next one.